Hartford Speedball. Dan Verderamp, Kyle Rickey. Well, Gary, thank you very much for that. We're just about ready to go for the late models. And uh, here are your starting lineups. Kyle Rickey, take it away. On the pole, card number six. For Larry Goss, Goss from North Windham, he'll lead the 15 car field to the green flag to his outside on the front row. Car number 32, hailing from Lisbon, that is Paul Hurd. Two rows back, starting third, it's number 28, say hello to Jay Lozniak. And right beside him, starting fourth, the number seven is Eddie Fee. The 17 goes next in line from West Haven, the 17 to the inside of that third row for Wayne Corey to his outside car, number five for Carl Erickson from Deep River. Mark St. Hilaire on the USS Charter Pot entry starts seventh and number three, and right beside him, he won the heat race, and he won the race last week. Number nine, he needs no introduction, Alan Coates. Ninth starter, the driver of car number nine. From Waterford, that is Chris Moose Dowden, and his outside, the 67 car. From Uncasville, that is Brandon Plemons. Starting 11th, it's the number eight car, that is Tom Metcalf, and right beside him, starting 12th, number two, Dwayne Knoll. 13th Starter, car number 19 from Portland for Chandler Eccles, and his outside, it's the 73 from Ashaway, Rhode Island for Joe Perry. And rounding out the field, Kyle, that is the number 35 out of Grant, Connecticut. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Bruce Thomas Jr. So there you go, and now Matt Buckler will step in. Take it away, guys. 30 laps the distance for the Bob Valente Auto Mall late models here tonight. Of course, Alan Coates, the Winner a week ago, Mark St. Hilaire, Bruce Thomas Jr., Carl Erickson, and Wayne Corey, the top five in last week's 30 lap main event as we go. The tradition of the Waterford late models. Here is another segment. Larry Goss at the start. It's a huge jump over Paul Hurd. Likewise for Lozniak over Ed Field. And also caught in fifth place is Wayne Curry as they thunder their way into turn three. Yeah, that front row got into single file pretty quick. Everybody double wide from third on back. Lozniak gets the third spot down to the strike. And to the inside, Corey for fourth. Top four go nose to tail behind Larry Goss in turn two. Ed Field came very close to scraping the guardrail on the front straightaway. We will see what happens this time around. The 90 of Coach quickly in contention. Now he is trying to sizzle his way around the three of Mark St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire battled for that fifth position. One car backsliding pretty quick. Carl Erickson right now mid-pack. He was caught in the outside lane, lost about four or five spots. Gets in the line as the battle for second among five cars. Go back to turn number one with Lozniak in that position. Hurd got a little loose coming into turn four. He gave the real estate to Lozniak, and he just gobbled it up to move into third, and here comes Wayne Corey. Power move into third place. Mark St. Hilaire is in fourth, and Paul Hurd is trapped in no man's land on the outside group. Oh, trouble just ahead of them. The battle for second got a little too close and stacks the field up on the back straightaway. Paul Hurd, among others, involved in the incident off of turn number two. Everything's been cleaned up. We're ready to go back to green. Larry Goss to lead him around. To his outside, Wayne Corey Jr. Off of turn four, green flag is up with 26 laps to go. The battle is for second. Alan Coates in the 90, Corey in the outside, and Corey, does he have the stamina to stay even with Alan Coates? Gonna be tough to do with Alan Coates to the bottom. He's been the driver to beat all season thus far. A feature in a heat race, and Coates goes right to the bottom to the inside of Larry Goss. Little contact and paint traded over in turn number two, but a new race leader, Alan Coach trouble behind him though. The race for a second gets together. One car launched into the air. And we'll go under caution again. Right now on the front row. Let's see if Moose Downton. Remember, that car took a very tough landing. Let's see yeah. how much uh, energy it has on this restart. Green flags up. We're back underway. Downton in the outside lane to the inside. Alan Coach as they go double wide to turn number two, and here comes Erickson to the inside to challenge for the second spot. They go nose to nose in turn three. The inside appears to be the way to go. Getting some bite is Erickson, and he is close enough to change the stations on Coates' radio as they head down the backstretch. For the first time this season, Alan Coates is challenged for the lead over in turn number three. Carl Erickson to the inside. Coates shuffled up the speedway, and here comes the 17, or checked out the 35 to the inside for second. Coates back to third, maybe fourth by the time they get to the backstretch. And he needs to get to the bottom because he has been Hung out to dry on the outside. So in this race so far, everybody having a difficult time negotiating the outside groove. Carl Erickson, Bruce Thomas.
Thomas, the one-two punch at the front of the field. Bruce Thomas Jr. right there within a car length as Coates continues to backslide. Now outside of the top five, he falls to six as Corey goes by to the bottom. Here's Plemons to the bottom. Coates dropping like a rock as the battle for the lead continues down in turn number two between Erickson and Thomas. You know, it was not a good sign, Kyle, when they came into turn four on the restart and Alan Coates did not keep his car down low. He gave the five too much room, so obviously some problems with the 90 car of Alan Coates as he could not keep that car protecting the bottom the way he wanted to, and it left a cavity that uh, Carl Erickson gladly took advantage of. Yeah, maybe a mechanical problem, maybe a tire going down on the uh, 90. We'll get Gary on top of uh, the Alan Coates situation as the race for the lead continues over in turn two. Erickson and Thomas nose to tail through turn two and onto the back straight away. Dowin alone in third in a battle for fourth is a good one. Eddie Field and Dwayne Knoll, they go side by side for that position. A little contact between Field and Knoll, and Knoll was able to muscle his way into the number four position. Eddie Field continues to be right there, and Wayne Corey is not going to vanish into the night year at the bowl as he is hanging tough in sixth place. And Eddie Field gets shuffled up the banking over in turn number four. Noel goes by, Corey goes by. Here comes Mark St. Hilaire to the bottom of the speedway in car number three. No change at the front. It continues to be Erickson in the five car, the 35 car right there, Bruce Thomas Jr. Dowin alone in third, and then that great battle from fourth on back, led by Dwayne Knoll. So the outside groove has been the Bermuda Triangle tonight. You get caught out there, and we might never see you again, as Eddie Field has finally stabilized this situation. Back in seventh place, here comes Bruce Thomas to the outside of Erickson. And Erickson a little out of shape off of turn number four, broke his momentum just a bit. Here comes Thomas to the outside. Side by side for the lead down in turn number three and at the stripe off of the turn four, just past halfway, nearly dead even, but it was Thomas in the outside lane. Just when we said the outside groove was no man's land, here comes Bruce Thomas looking very comfortable on the outside. He has moved to about a quarter of a car ahead of Erickson as they dive bomb their way off the corner. Side by side in the line and this time it's gonna be Carl Erickson and by a half a car length as they continue to swap paint and swap the lead off of turn number two. Erickson to the bottom, Thomas up high, third time by side by side for the lead. The wheel man, Carl Erickson, the battleship, Bruce Thomas. Those two cars are almost Velcro together, surgically attached to each other as they head down the back stretch. Boost out it in third, Mark St. Hilaire is in fourth with Corey in fifth, but the spotlight continues to shine on two drivers. Carl Erickson Jr. and Bruce Thomas is going to take another shot to the outside. It'll be 10 laps to go next time by with Erickson to the bottom and a good run for Thomas on the front straightaway but could not get up alongside. A little contact on the back straightaway among the race leaders. Off of turn number four, 10 laps to go for Carl Erickson and Bruce Thomas as they race for the lead as they go to turn one. Thomas muscles his way to the outside again. Does he have enough forward momentum and bite to take over the lead? He has it now. Let's see what happens as they power their way into the corner. Side by side once again, nine laps to go. Erickson and Thomas nose to nose back to turn number one and it's going to be Thomas just by a bit on the back straightaway, a half a car length. Erickson on the bottom as they go to turn three. Eight laps to go in the late model feature. A little contact between the two front runners is Erickson Almost took the lead away from Thomas. Kyle, it looks like a battleship Bruce can stay on the outside for a while, but eventually Carl Erickson's momentum on the bottom and his leverage helps him get the lead back. Third time by again, they are side by side, and for the sixth lap in this race, Thomas in the outside lane. Down low, Carl Erickson with lap traffic just ahead. That may be a factor here as Mark St. Hilaire goes to third. Moving around, Chris Moose Dowton for that position. Leaders back to the line with six to go. And the 19 car of Chandler Eccles. Will he play a role in this finish? Carl Erickson has solidified his lead to a car length over Bruce Thomas as they dart their way into the fourth turn. Last week's winner about to get lapped, Alan Coates, and it may be a tire down on that car as the leaders go back to turn number two. This time, Thomas to try the bottom on Erickson, but falls back in the line in turn three. Well, we know Carl Erickson wants to keep that car protecting the bottom. 
Bruce Thomas looking for room as he changes his tactics and goes outside. And again, got Erickson loose off of turn number four, and Thomas gets the run that he was looking for down into turn one. Pulls up alongside, but can he stay there for three laps? It'll be three to go at the line, and once again, Matt, they are side by side. And they are coming together like symbols in an orchestra. Thomas getting the jump on the outside. Here comes a relentless Carl Erickson Jr. on the bottom, a half a car length. Bruce Thomas is gonna to try to take the lead as they head to the stripe. It is two cars almost glued together. They are back to turn one and they are still side by side. Erickson in the bottom, Thomas up high with a lap and a half to run. It'll be the white flag this time. Bruce Thomas Jr., Carl Erickson, off turn four, white flags up, one lap to go in the late model main event. Who's it gonna be as they go to turn one? Mark St. Hilaire closing quick in third, but he may run out of time. They go to turn three, Thomas in the outside lane, Erickson down low, both cars a little out of shape. Off of turn four, it's going to be the five of Carl Erickson to take down the race win. Five and of Carl Erickson by a car length over the 35 of Bruce Thomas Jr. And the three was coming in a hurry for Mark St. Hilaire and was set to make it a three-way race for the win. If uh, we had another lap or two, he would have been right there in the thick of things. Side by side, lap after lap, the story of this late model main event. One feature still the run, the mini stocks are lined up and ready to go for the 20 lap nightcap as we go down trackside. And Matt Buckler with Carl Erickson, our race winner. Well, Kyle, I don't think we could have had a more exciting race than the one we've just witnessed in the Bob Valente Auto Ball late model division. And here is our winner. Carl Erickson. Carl, lap after lap, you and Bruce Thomas battled. What was the difference between the two race cars down the final 10 laps of the race? Yeah, just uh, eight tires turned better than four. We were real tight and uh, probably ran Bruce a little rough, a little, rough, little rougher than I'd like to, but uh, we did what we had to do to get the win. And you have to be happy that your first win came a lot earlier in the season this year than it did last year. Yeah, you know, this thing's been real fast in the heat of the day. We just can't figure it out at night. And uh, last week we got real loose, and tonight we got real tight. We'll take it. Well, the wheel man tonight was the wheel deal here at the Speed Bowl. Carl Erickson Jr., one final comment. Yeah, I just got to thank all the crew and Jeff and Glenn, the, the motor, and this thing's awesome. And our new sponsor, East Rock Septic, Greg, Greg Novak. And, uh, you know, they just all stepped on board this year and really gave us what we needed. So this is going to be a good year, I think. Well, what we needed tonight was a great race, and we got one from the Bob Valente Automalls because of this man, Carl Erickson, Jr.